Hello iRacers. Today I want to do a quick demo of a Windows application I've been working on for the last year or so. I call it Sten Analyzer. First, a couple disclaimers. I'm not a Windows application developer. There are probably bugs in this software like all software. And even though I've tried really hard to make sure this application is bulletproof, I'm sure there's problems in it. I developed this mostly for a practicing and setup tool to help analyze how a setup and a driver perform over a long run. To give some background, I mostly run NASCAR ovals. Basically over the short run, most drivers are pretty even, but where a setup and driver really stand out is over the long run. I wanted to be able to compare myself against others in practice sessions to see how my lap time stacked up to theirs. While you can do all this manually, it's time consuming. I developed Stint Analyzer to track a driver's stint. A stint is considered the time a car leaves pit road and returns to pit road either by pitting or exiting the car. Each time a car crosses the start finish line with a valid lap time, it is captured by Stint Analyzer. Now let's see it in action. As you can see from this AI practice, as cars pass the start finish line, the averages are being calculated. You can see I average out the lap times in what I call buckets. Uh, these are predefined set intervals, 3, 5, 7, 10, 15 laps, and so on. I highlight the fastest lap times so it's easier to see. You can also sort on each column to make the data more useful to you. You can select two, three, four drivers by clicking on the checkbox and then going over here to graph selected. That'll show you the lap times in a graph form. You can tell here that Denny Hamlin's a lot faster because he's uh, on the lowest line here than uh, Chase Elliott and Quinn Huff. You can also highlight the rows or the, the laps and it'll zoom in on that portion. You can use your mouse wheel to roll in and out uh, based on wherever your mouse is located at. It's going to try to zoom into that part. Um, you can also click the reset view here and it'll zoom it back out. You'll notice that the take screenshot buttons at the bottom of most screens. You can click that we're going to say no for this right now and say I want to save this. Uh, I'm just going to click it again to make it faster but now I can right click on it open and you can see it took a screenshot basically of what we had uh, uh, on the screen at the time. I will get into the Discord stuff later. Um, it's in the documentation, but it's probably a little more than I want to cover in this first video. You can also just pick uh, two drivers. Uh, this only lets you compare two stints, so whichever two you pick first, it's going to grab those and click Compare Two Stints. So you'll notice it'll have each driver, the lap uh, that the driver's on in this stint, the lap that the driver was on during the practice, so that's lap four in this stint. It's lap one in the stint, but lap four in the session. His uh, lap times and his averages as it goes down versus Chase Elliott over here. And it'll show you the difference between the two driver's laps time, lap times, so you can see that Denny was uh, faster than him the whole way. You can also, like I said, take a screenshot of that. Um, it only shows what's on the screen. So if you want to see more information, you can maximize it. And it's just going to take whatever's inside this box here and, and snapshot it. The uh, next thing is exporting. You can export um, selected uh, stents to Excel or CSV actually. And 
going to say no here. And I'm going to export uh, this to uh, to a CSV, it's just those two stents. Again, I didn't have this ready, so I'm going to just do it this way. Now I'm going to click open. And you'll see uh, it exported it to Excel. I'm going to open it and earn it into CSV, and I'm going to open it in Excel. And it'll show all the information uh, that it can gather. One other thing I'll mention on this, of course, the player car has has uh, tire uh, wear and information, but uh, the tires are only updated at the very end of a stint because uh, iRacing doesn't give you live tire data uh, on from the SDK. Also, some of these values like uh, fuel used is only available to the player car, oil temp, water temp. Uh, but iRacing does give us RPMs, and uh, also gives our, and we can calculate the speed. They also give us the steering angles. Uh, so all this information is exported. Also, if it's the player's car, it'll have the setup name here. So that way, if you have multiple setups that you're uh, going through, you can see which setup you're running. And you'll see Chase Elliott's down here as well. You can click the export all. It works the same way as the export selected, but maybe you maybe you only want to pull your stents in. Is the reason I put that. Uh, so you can click export all, and it basically does the same thing. It's going, but it's going to export everybody's stent data. The clear button will just clear it, and uh, let you start over. Um, it clears off this, and it'll start re generating the averages again. Um, there are a couple of options up here that I want to go over. You can save all this data as a JSON file. So if you want to save, save this session and then come back and look at it tomorrow, you can save it and then come back up here and file and open and open that uh, JSON file that you just saved. Um, I do have an option for autosave and basically what autosave does is every time a session changes it will save that JSON file automatically so if it goes from practice to qualifying to race it will save uh, that JSON file each time um, also whenever you close Stint Analyzer it will automatically save that JSON file uh, the other option is do not count caution laps. So if you're using this during a race, you can tell it not to count the caution laps because it kind of skews the averages. Uh, this wasn't really developed as a tool to run while you're uh, while you're racing, but it does work. But uh, there's so many variables in speed uh, that is mostly meant as a practice tool. You can say show only my stints which I wasn't racing in this race, I just had AI going, but if I if I was, it would just show my stance right here. I can say show only current stance, and it'll show the last stint this driver did. You'll notice if I unclick it, uh, Kevin Harvick's had three stints here, but if I click it, it'll show just the last one. And then someone requested that because during a race session the screen gets kind of busy with all the pitting and stuff that goes on. Um, you can also select show only current stints during the race session. Um, this will show up, this will only show the current stint if a race session is going on. Um, so you can leave the practice the way it is or any other session the way it is and it'll show all the stints but if you only want to see the current one that all the drivers are in that kind of reduces the amount of data that's shown on the screen reset discord settings and windows locations I kind of put those in as a safety feature if for some reason you can't uh, something gets corrupted you can reset these data the windows locations 
basically I try to save where you open all these windows uh, when you click on the graph or something else. I try to save the location so that the next time it opens it'll open in the same location. But if somehow it gets off the screen it's possible that you can do the reset windows locations. There's also, which I don't have this displayed, but there will also be an icon in your task uh, bar that's, uh, that's SA basically. And you can right click on that as well. Uh, and you can reset Discord settings or Windows, applica uh, Windows positions. And there's an option to actually close the app too. Uh, I'll talk a little about the Discord setup, but it's better that you read the documentation. If you uh, click on help and documentation, it will open up a PDF for you and all the documentation. There's a section on Discord and it's a little, uh, uh, you know, ne needs to be read. So uh, I'll go into a little explanation of what, why I integrated it with Discord. Is, um, one thing that we wanted to do as a team, we wanted to be able to share our data between each other. So for the exporting, of all the stent data to CSV. That way we could automatically upload it to Discord. Um, this allowed people that didn't have a whole lot of computer background as well to just go ahead and automatically upload it to their Discord uh, channel. Also, after some thought, I said, well, it'd be kind of neat, you know, we're at work, but we, we still have Discord loaded on our laptops or our phones be nice to know if somebody is racing and uh, know how they're doing so we uh, come up with an idea of putting uh, discord messages out and uh, basically uh, at every 20 minutes or so it'll send us an update saying this driver's in p5 on lap whatever the lap is with so many laps remaining and the current leader is and it'll tell how many cautions they had and how many incident points they have so we can tell if they've been wrecked already or not. And then at the end it'll tell us uh, the checker flags there and uh, uh, what position they came home in at what track, how many cautions there were, how many incidents they had, who was a race winner, and then a link to the results. So this was kind of a neat way to keep, uh, you know, some of our team members they work during the day some are off during the day some are racing during the day so it kind of helped keep us uh, all involved and know how someone's doing um, again I'm not going to cover this a whole lot uh, it may maybe uh, the, hopefully the documentation is uh, good enough to help you along with that but I may try to do another video for that I did want to explain what the difference was between categories and text channels though. Um, first of all, race updates can only be sent to a text channel. Um, so it only lists all the text channels that are available uh, for that. So whatever you have selected here, these messages will be delivered to that channel. Uh, the attachments though, we wanted to kind of limit where those went, uh, we didn't want to. We wanted, or we didn't want to limit them, but we also wanted more variety. I guess is a better way of saying it. So, for example, we set up a category called setups, but then we put all the racetracks underneath that setup, uh, underneath that folder or that category. So, if we're working on Charlotte like we were a moment ago, when you get that pop-up box, it'll have the track listed, and you can put Charlotte's information in the Charlotte channel. Uh, it remembers the last channel you uploaded to so for you know if you're working on a certain track that week it'll automatically you know pull that up for you and then when you change tracks you just change that pop-up box. Um, so that's kind of how we done it. So if you so basically we we put everything to uh, category setups and then let's let's see it, when that pop-up box pulls up, it only shows all the categories under setup. Uh, or you can leave it at all and just navigate which ones it will. 
uh, the one thing about that is you uh, the the channel you're only able to select the channels that the Discord bot has access to, and that's covered in the documentation. But again, that's a little more than I want to cover here. Uh, but after you make your changes, you can click save. Uh, if some reason these messages all get messed up, which they shouldn't, but only certain values are available at certain times like you don't have a starting position when a race session just gets started so uh, I wanted to be able to uh, for people to be able to put their twitch address or something you know uh, customize these messages for themselves a little bit but also there is only certain information that's available during during certain conditions so just keep that in mind if you get some weird results. Uh, th these are little placeholders and uh, like poll winner. That's the name of the person that won the poll and their poll and their lap time. Those are covered in that PDF as well. You can also double click on a uh, stint and it'll show you all the summary information for it. Now remember I said that the setup and some of these other values are only available to the to the your car only you can't see other people's tire wear and you can't see other people's oil temp and fuel but um, what this will do is show you a summary of the stint and then give you all the details here too and you notice there's other columns of information here basically this is the same as a CSV file uh, but it's in a little different format and easier to get to so one of the users didn't use um, didn't have Excel, but they did have someone that set up a Google uh, Documents for them, Google Sheets. And one thing that they wanted to do was be able to select, uh, be able to put in their lap times. Oops. They wanted to be able to put in their lap times into that Google Sheet. So you can highlight all these, uh, all their lap times, and then hit Control C for copy. And then you can hit Control V to paste. That's Control Victor, by the way, to paste, and they could paste it straight into their Google document. Uh, I'm just using Notepad here, but so you could you, you could copy this into Excel, or you could copy it into uh, Google Sheets, and that just have your lap times there. So that's one other thing that we can do with this. Again, we have that uh, take screenshot again, and you know, at the end of a run, if you want to take a screenshot of this and send it in, it'll have your tire temps and uh, wear on there, along with a setup name that you were using at that time. One last thing I'll mention is there is a setup name over here again that's only for your car so if you do multiple stints you can see that okay stint one I was on version one of the setup stint two I was on version two of the setup so that will come in handy if you're trying to compare two setups to each other. That's the end of this demo. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Discord integration, uh, I suggest you take a look at the uh, PDF document and uh, read it, understand it. Like I said, you do have to set up a bot, uh, and it's uh, it's not hard, but it's you know you got to know a little bit about Discord to know what to do. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you can find this tool useful. I'm not planning on charging anything for this tool. I'm basically just giving it to the community, but also I think if I did charge for it that uh, your expectations would uh, probably increase that I make changes or bug fixes and things like that when I already have a full-time job and really don't want to dedicate uh, a lot of time to making changes and fixing things at this moment in time. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it, uh, hope you can use it, hope it makes you faster, and uh, see you on the track.